If two objects are thrown out of a window at the same time, both are going to fall. Both are eventually going to hit the ground. At no point will life say to either of the objects, oh, I favor object two over object one. So I'm gonna make sure that that object doesn't fall. It's going to be, they're both gonna be subjected to the laws of gravity. It's just going to happen because life is impersonal. Life does not personalize or care or favor or hold one above the other. Life is impersonal. And it benefits you to understand that because you can look at your life as a blank slate and impersonal. What do you want to give meaning to? What do you want to emphasize? What do you want to de-emphasize? How do you want to curate your life? How do you want to co-create with the universe? The reason why I started this channel is to address the impersonalness of life while also addressing the personalness of humans. So in the shorts, you'll see a lot of videos on hierarchies, disparities, power, rank, and privilege, governments, and all this other stuff that we've given meaning to. And the idea for those videos is to take a step back and ask a question that can hopefully let you, allow you to see the scenario a little bit better than you can when you're in the middle of it or hyped in an opinion or watching the news and you know just drawn into it. How can we ask questions that can give you a better understanding and more of an eagle eye view of what's going on with humans? Because when we look at the two objects thrown out of the window, if one's favored more than the other, that's just a human opinion at the end of the day. It's just an opinion. We're all subjected to the laws of gravity, well, here on this planet at least. We're all subjected to laws of physics. It just is what it is. There's not anything we can do about it. But the idea is that what can we do with it? So. I'll give you a brief uh, story of when I felt that life was extremely personal. I was, in the I was in middle school and we went to the roller gardens for a field trip one summer and I was working up the confidence to ask this girl out at the roller gardens. My friends knew, I think that her friends knew, I don't know, I told everybody so I was like, I'm gonna ask her out. And there was a skate competition, a roller skate competition, a race. And I said, oh man, good thing I got my rollerblades. <laughs> I'm gonna win this race. So I entered into the race and I won it. Great, woohoo. And I turned to my friend and I said, oh man, this is totally cool, I won this race because now uh, she's totally gonna say yes to go out with me. <laughs> the idea that I thought that was going to sway someone's opinion of me says that it speaks to just how personal and naive that I was at the time because the idea was I was under the influence or I, I had the like the Hollywood Disney you know movie idea in my mind you know what you read in the comic books and the books that you know if you win the thing then you can have all the things that you want in life or, or that you can you can be in all the scenarios that you, you dream of and that's just not the case life is impersonal that the girl don't care that you won the roller skate race. You care that you won the roller skate race. I cared that I did. And so I had given the roller skating race meaning. Nobody else did. And my friend looked at me and laughed when I said, when I mentioned that, you know, perhaps me winning a roller skate race would mean that uh, I'm going to ask this girl out and she's going to say yes. You give meaning to what you give meaning to. And this works in three steps. This works in impersonal, meaning, emphasis. So impersonal, meaning, and then expansion, I should say, not emphasis. The impersonality or impersonalness of life means that it just is what it is. There, there's, there's nothing favored, there's nothing there's, there's nothing that's defined or branded. If I point at that tree and I say, well, it's not a tree. The word tree is made up by humans. It's not whatever we, we call it. It, it. it is just what it is. And so that's the impersonalness of life. It's a blank slate. It's whatever you want it to be. And 
when we go up a rung on that, when we go to the meaning that we're giving it, what is the meaning that we're giving it? How can we be aware? How can we be spiritually aware and also physically aware of where we're giving meaning in our life? Once we start to take a look at where we're giving meaning to it, like the roller skate race, we then can see that that is expanding. So whatever we pay attention to expands. I thought that the roller skate race was a really meaningful thing. It then expanded into this almost delusional idea that, you know, because I win it means that I'm going on a date. Like that, that's just not the way it works though. So if I just focus in on the roller skating race means that I won and I'm proud of myself. It has no bearing on anyone else. It's just my meaning and I can't leverage that out to anyone or anything else. It just is what it is. Life and the universe, and the universe, universe, uh, did not care that middle school Tucson won a roller skating race. Um, but I cared. And that's, that's, all, that's all that really should have mattered at that time. And I, I preface all this with one, one more story. In, in that, not the same summer, it was before that, I think I was 10 years old. I remember we all went to the state fair, state fair the Minnesota State Fair. And my mother had given me, I think, 5 or $10 to buy something or you know, play arcade games, whatever it was, buy food. And I spent half of that on a toy. And I held on to that toy and I was like, oh, this is really cool. I, I remember it was, a, it was like a... Um, it was like a stage prop, like knife. So if you like, you know, it was like plastic and had like a spring in it. So it looked like, you know, you were, you were actually, you know, this is in the nineties. So they were selling weapons at the, um, or toy weapons at the Minnesota State Fair. And I looked at it and I said, oh man, this thing is so cool. And then I looked at it more after I bought it and I was like, man, I don't, I don't think this is cool anymore. I'm not really a fan of it. But my friend said, oh man, I really like that. Do you mind if I buy it from you? And I was like, oh no, no, I'm good. I bought, no, I bought it for $5, he wanted to buy it for four. And I said, no, 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 I'm not gonna sell it. I, 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 I kinda like this thing, but I'm not sure. And then one of the staff members turned to me, he said, well, do you like it or not? And I said, I don't know, I, I, I think I like it. And he's like, well, if you like it, then it's a prize, it's gold. But if you don't like it, then it's a, cheap piece of, it's a cheap piece of trash, is what he said. He said, if you, if you like the thing that you bought, then it's worth it and it's golden. But if you don't like it, then it's a cheap piece of junk. And I could not rack my brain around it at that time. My 10 year old brain was like blown away. I was like, I, don't, I do not understand what you're saying to me right now, this is crazy. And looking back at it now, it was whatever meaning I gave to the toy was what the meaning was going to be. That's all, that's all that this, this, this person was trying to relay to me. I ended up selling it for $4 to the other kid. And I felt incredible because I was able to bring that money back to my mother. I wasn't going to use it for anything. I'm 10 years old. Um, and I, I felt great. I was like, oh, this is so cool. I, I went to the state fair and only spent $6. And so I felt really proud. And so that was the meaning that that whole scenario gave to me. And because I understood that that moment... It was entirely impersonal. One, one, one person's gold is another person's garbage. It's whatever the meaning is or the function of it at the time. It's the, 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 the age old story of the, the boy who is able to ride horses. I'm totally gonna uh, mistell this, but it, you'll get the point. The, there's a boy who's extremely talented at riding horses and then the, the village says, wow, he's, he's so blessed. Uh, and then the, the boy falls off of the horse at some point, breaks his leg, and the, the village says, oh, wow, he's so unlucky. Then uh, an army comes by uh, and says, look, we're going off to war. We need your, your most able-bodied young people. And uh, this boy's father says, my, my son can't go. He has a broken leg. And they say, okay. And they, go, they all go march off to their deaths. They all get slaughtered. And the village says, oh, wow, he must be so lucky. But the idea is that whatever this scenario was, it just was what it was. It was unlucky, then it was unlucky. Then it was lucky, then it was unlucky. It is what is in your life that you are going to favor. What do you want to hold on to? What beliefs are going to serve you and only you? And also take inventory of the beliefs that are not serving you right now. You will have to get rid of some things to get to an emphasis that you really wanna be a part of. 
when when you sit there or when I sat there and focused on the roller skate race and thought that that was going to be the here all end all, that did not serve me. It just didn't. But there's a better way to look at it for it to serve me to say, oh, I'm proud of myself. On to the next. That's it. That's all that it is. So when you come to the understanding that two objects thrown out of a window, neither will be favored by life at all. Life is simply here to ask you, what meaning do you want to give it? What meaning do you want to give to life today? What meaning do you want to give to life for the year, for the month? What is everything like, that's led up to now? How do you want to define that? Somebody said, when you have a setback, instead of saying, damn, that sucks, you can say, wow, this is going to be a great, a, great, uh, a great part of the story when I tell it, when I get to the top of the mountain. And that's all that it is. A setback, honest, it, for me, in my life, any setback has been a blessing. It has only been a lesson and a blessing. And that's just the way that I choose to look at those events as lessons or blessings. And if I can learn from those things, then great. Then on to the next, on to the next. Keep going. So again, when you look at your life as impersonal as possible, what are you seeing that you're paying attention to that's expanding? Maybe you're living your life right and you're doing everything correctly that you want to do right now. But then the next question would be, if not, what can you let go of and then start investing attention into to then see that expand? Everything is an investment. What are you investing in and how is it benefiting you in the long run in your life?